Two of the biggest stars in the history of boxing are the Manasseh Mahler, Jack Dempsey, and the Boston strong boy, John L. Sullivan. It was Sullivan who set the tone in the late 1800s, becoming the first recognized world heavyweight champion in boxing history and generating an estimated one million plus in earnings over the course of his career. Dempsey would be partly responsible for boxing's first ever $1 million and $2 million gates in the 1920s. Both were exciting offensive fighters, but how would they match up prime for prime? Jack Dempsey had a total of 73 official bouts. Dempsey had 53 wins, 43 by knockout, with a knockout ratio of 81% for his wins. He suffered six defeats, one of them by knockout. He had eight draws. He also had six no decision bouts. He stood 6'1", with an aggregate weight of around 189 pounds over his career. This included a 73-inch reach. John L. Sullivan had 41 official bouts under the Marcus of Queensbury rules, which is boxing as we know it today. Sullivan had 38 wins, 32 by knockout, with the knockout ratio of 84% in his wins. He suffered only one defeat. He had one draw. He also had one no contest. He stood 5'10 and a half with an aggregate weight of around 208 pounds for his career. This included a 74 inch reach. If you know Jack Dempsey, then you know of his offensive prowess and his being one of the most devastating punchers in the heavyweight division's history. Dempsey used a crouching, come forward style predicated on him landing vicious shots with authority. Dempsey started his career fighting as a hobo, jumping from train to train, city to city, looking to fight any willing opponent for cash. One famous Dempsey quote passed down, though maybe in hyperbole, is that Dempsey would go into a place stating, I can't sing and dance, but I can lick anyone in the house. This, though, held true. Dempsey clawed his way to the top by fighting and knocking out many of his opponents. Dempsey would use what some call the Dempsey roll on defense as he crouched and weaved his way inside. He had a very solid jab, and when he found an opening, he would use his leverage to loop in shots at full force. This was best displayed in his dismantling of Jess Willard in their 1919 World Heavyweight title fight and was the catalyst for him becoming a global icon. Dempsey also preferred to get his opponents out as quick as possible. Fighters who employed movement, the likes of Gene Tunney, were able to trouble Dempsey as he moved the entirety of the fight to not allow Dempsey to truly set up his punches. The Boston Strong Boy was the first superstar in boxing and is credited with taking boxing mainstream. Sullivan is the last bare knuckle champion but was a proponent for glove fighting as well and that's what helped usher it into the sport as we know it. We made a video detailing John L. Sullivan's path to the world heavyweight title. Be sure to check it out. Sullivan looked for any edge he could gain as he built the foundation of his legacy. He was intimidating in stature and legend considering several of his out of the ring crusades. Sullivan used his broad shoulders and chest to tie up and lean in on fighters, given his time as a bare knuckler and working with some of the great wrestling trainers of his day. Sullivan would shoot off a barrage of power punches early in a fight with constant intent on gaining a knockout. He possessed the endurance to carry power later in the fights and used a feigning left cross to set up straight power rights. Sullivan developed into a standout fighter working with some of the best trainers of his day and was a craftier fighter than he's given credit for. Sullivan thrived against opponents who chose to meet fire with fire and racked up many knockouts during his career. Sullivan ran into his most trouble against smaller fighters who were swift on their feet and were apt enough defensively to force Sullivan to fight on the move. The greatest examples of this were his contests with Charlie Mitchell and Jim Corbett. Jack Dempsey held the world heavyweight title from 1919 to 1926. Top flight contenders like Fred Fulton, Willie Meehan, John Lester Johnson, and fireman Jim Flynn were instrumental in seasoning Dempsey as he made a name in the sport. In 1919, he eagerly and willingly defeated heavyweight champion Jess Willard in one of the most iconic and brutal beatings ever captured on film. Willard was about six foot six and a half and 240 plus pounds, and he became champion by taking the title from Jack Johnson. Dempsey took on Billy Misk in his first title defense, beating the durable Minnesota in 1920. Dempsey fought a major crossover mainstream fight against world light heavyweight champion George Carpentier of France in 1921. This was 
was also the first $1 million gate in boxing history, $1.7 million to be exact. Dipsy had one of the most exciting action fights in history when he faced off against Argentine puncher Luis Angel Fierpo in 1923 after defeating the crafty Tommy Gibbons some two months earlier. Dipsy famously fought the fighting Marine Gene Tunney in what was the first ever fight to generate a $2 million gate in 1926. The rematch between Dempsey and Tunney was iconic for what is called the long count, where a sequence of punches dropped Tunney to the canvas for what ultimately was around 14 seconds due to Dempsey not retreating to a neutral corner per rule that had been recently implemented. One of the biggest non-fights of Dempsey's career was a potential matchup with the Black Panther Harry Wills, who was in his prime at the same time as Dempsey and was considered to be the biggest threat to Dempsey's title reign. The great and aging Sam Lanker was another opponent who was long rumored to be someone who would have been a challenge for Dempsey. There was also world middleweight champion Harry Grebb, who Dempsey sparred on at least one occasion but chose not to give an opportunity to fight for the world heavyweight title as it was rumored that Grebb got the better of Dempsey. Sullivan held the world heavyweight title from 1882 to 1892. Some of his more notable opponents are Charlie Mitchell, who he faced on more than one occasion, even under London prize fighting rules. Sullivan lost his title to Gentleman Jim, James J. Corbett, in 1892. Sullivan also faced Patty Ryan in his first signature win in another fighter he faced on more than one occasion. Patsy Cardiff is a fighter that Sullivan drew with after breaking his left arm. Jake Kilrain is a fighter for which Sullivan won the Bare Knuckle Championship. Dominic McCaffrey was a contender from Sullivan's time, whom he also defeated. Sullivan is also alleged to have participated in around 400 to 500 unofficial fights and or exhibitions for which he won. Sullivan embarked on a tour across America and offered as much as $1,000 to anyone who could last four three-minute rounds with him in the ring. As he once proclaimed, I can lick any son of a bitch in the room. This, though, didn't extend to fighters of color. Given such, there were some matchups that never took place and thus leaves a number of what-ifs as it relates to John L. Sullivan's overall career and resume. This includes Old Chocolate George Godfrey and the Black Prince Peter Jackson, the latter being universally considered the biggest threat to Sullivan's title claim and reign. The Irish giant Peter Marr is another top heavyweight from the time who never got an opportunity to face Sullivan. Stylistically, Dempsey used a crouching, forward-leaning style predicated on moving his head outside of the straight line of the opponent's body while looping his power of hooks to land cleanly on opponents. Dempsey's style was aggressive and he typically fought on the front foot being the orchestrator of offense. He would also bring up his jab from a crouch, allowing him to land while dipped to either side. This also helped him on the defensive end, making it harder for opponents to land cleanly. John L. Sullivan, like Dempsey, was an aggressive fighter who was also offense-leaning. Sullivan would storm and swarm opponents from the opening bell, looping power shots. Sullivan would faint with his left in order to set up his biggest punches from his strong right hand. Sullivan's style remained the same throughout his career, but he did add varying elements to refine his style as he grew more into a mature fighter. Both Dempsey and Sullivan had the ability to weather the storm in going the distance, but it was more prominent for Sullivan. Sullivan on multiple occasions fought in fights that were far beyond the hour mark. One caveat is this generally occurred in his bare knuckle fights. That aside, Sullivan did compete in some fight to the finish matchups under the boxing rules. Even in his lone loss to Jim Corbett, it took 21 rounds for Corbett to knock out John L. Sullivan. Both fighters had great chins with each only being knocked out once in their career. In the case of Dempsey, this happened in his 1917 fight with fireman Jim Flynn, though some, Dempsey included, have asserted that it wasn't a clean knockout in more ways than one. Sullivan's lone knockout came in the final fight of his career when he was far removed from the fighter he was in his prime. Both were offensive fighters, as we've detailed, and power played a big part in their success. Dempsey gained 43 knockouts and 53 victories, while Sullivan gained 32 knockouts and 38 victories. Each had the power to end things at any point in the fight, though the level of opposition in those knockouts favored Dempsey. With that in mind, Dempsey had a greater resume than Sullivan as the heavyweight division was more firmly established by the time he came around, largely in part to Sullivan ushering in what would become the lineal title. Sullivan beat every opponent, but many of his opponents could be considered novice boxers. At the time he fought them, Sullivan's official matched opponents had a combined record of 83 wins, 8 losses, and 16 draws. 25 of those opponents were making their debut. 
diving a bit deeper and taking a look at the combined retirement record of those same opponents, the record is 139 wins, 100 losses, and 50 draws. Many of Sullivan's opponents fought only once in their career. While intangibles can't be officially measured, no question that both of these fighters possessed the type of intangibles that allowed them to become the biggest stars of their era. Dempsey coming into the ring in dark shorts, no socks, helped inspire guys like Mike Tyson. This also added to the aura of the electric champion. Sullivan would fight anywhere and anytime. He also was one who lived a hard life outside of the ring as it related to his run-ins with the law and barroom benders that made him the ire of many. Despite such, fans marveled at the opportunity of meeting Sullivan and watching him compete. All things considered, it could be argued that John L. Sullivan laid the blueprint for a fighter like Jack Dempsey to become an offensive heavyweight star. With that, Dempsey far exceeded the expectations of him as a fighter when he started in the sport. It's a testament to Sullivan that he was able to build himself into the fighter he was primarily through word of mouth, and as sports media started to catch on, that helped to boost the sport in a way that made it more mainstream. Many of Sullivan's opponents aren't huge names in history, but were formidable opponents in their time. Dipsy, though, has more of the big name fighters with accomplishments alike that helped to bolster his record and what he was able to accomplish at the time. Additionally, we have a good array of footage on Dempsey which appeases to more of the casual fan who doesn't spend time going through newspaper archives to gain an understanding of who Sullivan was as a fighter. Now, as far as who wins, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Prime for Prime.